you know, one of the first things I feel like you always need to establish when you're going to do any change of habit or lifestyle, like giving up drinking, is understand the why. Because, like I said, 100,000 year history, it's like, well, for 100,000 years, we've kind of done this thing and we're still here, right? <laughs> you know, you could argue about how well we're doing, but we're still here. So this isn't something new that's come along like some synthetic drug that is ravishing our health. So maybe start with your own why you decided to be sober and, and live an alcohol-free lifestyle. Well, I was a socially acceptable drinker in my native country of Australia growing up in the sense that I would have two or three standard drinks most nights of the week. And on weekends, I would drink heavier and sometimes I would get drunk. Uh, to be clear, I never got arrested. I didn't get a DUI. I didn't hit rock bottom. I wasn't an alcoholic. But 20 years of consistent drinking habits finally caught up with me in my mid-30s. When I was in Austin, Texas, I was at that year's South by Southwest annual festival. Mm -hmm. I had two Bombay Sapphire gin and tonics at a industry party on a Friday night. And when I woke up the next morning, I just felt blah. And by blah, I mean, I'd put on about 30, 35 pounds. I wasn't sleeping great. My relationships weren't great. I was irritable, foggy, distracted, procrastinating on many things in my life. I would say I was operating at about a six out of 10, and I felt like I was a six out of 10. And so on that morning in a hotel outside of Austin, Texas, I looked in the mirror and I said, James, enough. Take a 30-day break just to see how it feels because it's got to be better than this. And so I did. I took 30 days off. I lost 13 pounds. I slept better. I looked better. I had an opportunity to audition to become a sports center anchor on ESPN. And to my bewilderment, they gave me the job. Yeah. And I thought, this alcohol-free lifestyle actually seems pretty good. And so I just kept going and going and going. And it's been since 2010 now since I last picked up a drink. That's amazing. And, and it really is a testament to what even a small, you could say, change because a lot of people, that's not everything. There's so many different things in our lifestyle, but obviously not an easy change can do for you. Now, for a lot of people, I think what, what I've heard there also is you kind of normalize not feeling so well. I know this in, in kind of the medical world. People come in, oh, I'm okay. I just don't sleep well. I don't eat well. I'm overweight. I'm You're not okay. <laughs> you know, the normalization of the fatigue, the brain fog as just part of aging is a little bit crazy. You know, I, I feel like we need to establish these these kind of things of what is alcohol doing to us? Because, again, we go to a sports game, you drink some alcohol, you know, if you're hungover, but even a few drinks, it's doing something to us. So can you go a little bit into what you've seen in, in your understanding of how alcohol is impacting us, even if you're not blackout like college frat boy drunk every weekend? There was a study that came out in. 2022 out of the UK, and they looked at 35,000 middle-aged adults who drank one seemingly innocent drink per night. So to be clear, seven standard drinks a week. And what they found was that even that, let's call it modest amount of consumption, was still enough to destroy the white and gray matter in our brain. Hmm. The bumper sticker is even one drink a night can cause some level of brain degeneration. Now, that's frightening. I mean, that should be frightening. The fact that even just one seemingly innocent glass of what I refer to as attractively packaged poison mm -hmm. is enough to compromise your brain function. Now, some people might say, oh, it's no big deal. I've been fine. A couple of drinks here or there. Live life a little. I'm like, okay, live life a little. But just know that if you're having anything around seven drinks per week, it's still compromising your life. It's mm -hmm. still compromising your health. So that's just something that I think should be a wake-up call for all of us. The challenge is, of course, is rewiring society's mindset around alcohol because it's just something that we've accepted. It's something that we glorify. It's something that we bow down at the altar and and acknowledge as like this amazing, joyful thing that connects us, that creates romance, that we use for celebration, that we use for stress and anxiety. That cultural conditioning is real, but it's changing. 
it's changing. As we have new studies, new research, new neuroscience that's coming out, and we're understanding the actual consequences of digesting this poison, people's attitudes towards alcohol are certainly changing. The younger generation surely are. It's that non-alcoholic industry now is growing year over year. What is it? I had to hear 20.6% year over year. And and kind of, you know, you know, those like Budweiser's and all those are kind of going after young people and they're yawning and saying, we, we don't need the alcohol. What do you think that is? Because that's kind of an interesting thing that that we, we are. You, you're coming in on this at the right time, at least with young people to get that message across. What do you think that is? Yes, to that point, a study from 2020 found that the portion of college-aged Americans who are completely alcohol-free had risen from 20 to 28% in a decade. I mean, that is a huge jump. Huge. And then during the, the pandemic, Generation Z Australians from my native country, they were found to be the most likely to have decreased their alcohol consumption with 44% of Generation Z Australians uh, drinking less which is more than double the rate for, for any other generation. So certainly the younger people, I think now that we, we're closer to or we have more access to education because of the internet, because of social media, because of the medical advancements in recent years, younger people are really understanding from a very early age the consequences of alcohol, consumptions, uh, alcohol consumption and the benefit from not drinking. So I, I would submit that... You know, just a, a, an access to more information and education um, and a commitment from that younger generation to live healthier lives uh, because they probably see their parents and grandparents not being as healthy as they could be from drinking alcohol. That's really had this compounding effect where now younger people are increasingly just being alcohol free, never even choosing to drink alcohol in the first place. 